My name is Mark Bernand. I'm the chief test pilot at Leonardo Helicopters in the UK. On the battlefield, it's important to have a very agile aircraft to make best use of the terrain. If you're terrain masking against threats, both visually and radar horizons, this aircraft has excellent handling qualities. It's got a lot of power. Uh, it accelerates and decelerates very quickly. That can be translated into a very aggressive rate of climb uh, and rate of descent. But also other phases of flight don't necessarily require such uh, an aggressive uh, and agile aircraft. And in those uh, sort of medium level transits, when I'm instrument flying, the aircraft has an extensive range of upper modes. I can couple navigation systems. I can fly procedural approaches into airports. It will give me the best performance that the aircraft is capable of, uh, whilst also keeping itself safe so that I don't damage transmissions, I don't break the aircraft, and then there's a, a resultant maintenance penalty. So I've got that aircraft available for me tomorrow as well. The aircraft has an excellent field of view, looking through overhead transparencies, lower ones through the footwell, as well as the main windscreen, gives the crew excellent situational awareness. Building it up, if you like, in terms of technology, the aircraft also has a moving map incorporated with the navigation system in the aircraft. So as I'm flying around, I'm not unfolding paper maps in the cockpit. In addition to that, both weather radar and tactical radars can be fitted. EODs, so FLIR systems, forward-looking infrared, day TVs, with or without laser designators, laser illuminators. The aircraft also has TCAS-2, so traffic collision avoidance system. Uh, keeps me very safe from other aircraft. H-TORS, so helicopter terrain avoidance warning system. Coupled in with all those sensors, I could also have a tactical data link on the aircraft, Link 16, something like that. So as well as providing myself information data up to the wider network, there's also the ability to interrogate that network uh, and enhance my situational awareness from all the other assets that are out there. Cabin is absolutely huge uh, for this class of aircraft. It's as wide as an AW101, uh, which gives you the ability to put in up to four stretchers, both across the cabin, uh, as well as lengthways down the cabin. You could fit 19 crashworthy seats in there for a high density configuration. That is for 19 lightly equipped troops, or you could configure the cabin with crashworthy seating for up to 16 fully equipped troops if battle ready support is required. As well as the size of the cabin, the fact that it has two very large doors on both sides, large footsteps, low floors, uh, means you can get people in and out very quickly. The aircraft is designed as a multi-role platform. It's very rapidly reconfigurable in the back of the aircraft. There's the uh, support helicopter role. So this could be a relatively simple mission of uh, lightly equipped or heavily equipped troops being moved from A to B in the back of the aircraft with two large uh, doors on either side of the cabin. This enables you to do fast roping activities with two sets of fast roping, so four people deploying from the aircraft at the same time. There's also a hoist capability if the aircraft's used in a search and rescue role. The aircraft can also be armed uh, with a variety of weapons, missiles. These can be located either on weapon wings or crew served weapons through the forward windows in the cabin of the aircraft, which is uh, an important feature during any kind of uh, combat search and rescue or special forces mission where you may be requiring to uh, deploy troops or recover troops under hostile fire. One of the most important aspects is that the aircraft from the outset has been designed for single pilot operations. If I'm flying along at low level, looking for a survivor in the water, uh, if you can imagine in and out of bad weather, low cloud, I get a fleeting glimpse of the survivor in the water. I quickly maneuver the aircraft over the top of where I see them. I press one button, the mark on target button, uh, take my hands off the controls and the aircraft will then set itself up in a circuit, bring itself around back into wind, descend to 50 feet over the water, bring itself into a hover, uh, and in my one o'clock position at 50 meters will be the survivor in the water. I then fly back to base, fully coupled approach back in in horrendous weather conditions. If it was really bad and I still was in a complete pea super of a fog at the end, but I know that I'm over the runway, I could literally command the aircraft at the end of the approach into a hover mode to bring itself back into the hover and then I could gently lower the aircraft onto the ground with minimum uh, touching of the controls by the crew, so very safely and very effectively. 
the speed uh, is certainly class defining, so it is a naturally very fast machine. The main rotor head, when you look at it, is cantered forward, so at a sort of 160 knots, the aircraft fuselage is actually quite level, so the, uh, the drag is minimized, um, so the aircraft is designed and in its element, if you like, at high speed. The aircraft has a maximum range in excess of 500 nautical miles. This means it can conduct missions at longer range. It's always a trade-off between range and endurance. So depending on, on the, uh, the phase of flight, the aircraft is also capable of uh, in excess of five hours endurance. From a survivability aspect, the AW149 is designed from the outset really to a very robust uh, military requirements. The aircraft is also fitted with a variety of defensive aid systems, radar warning receivers, missile warning receivers, uh, laser warning systems. The aircraft also has common munition dispensing systems, so chaff and flare can be fired off uh, to defeat incoming missiles. The crew and the passengers, um, soldiers in the back, are equipped with um, stroking seats that absorb energy uh, in the event of an impact uh, protecting the inhabitants. This is a truly all-weather aircraft, uh, day and night, 365 days a year, capable of being fitted with a full icing protection system that allows us to operate in the most horrendous icing conditions. The aircraft will tell us uh, that it's encountered and then automatically put on the heated blade system so to the main rotor blades and the tail rotor blades are heated. Uh, in terms of harsh environments that the aircraft might be required to operate in, uh, sand uh, is a particularly demanding environment. Uh, the aircraft has an inlet particle separator on its engines. In terms of maritime operations, probably one of the most challenging environments in which to operate. Uh, the 149 is designed with this in mind from the outset with a wet assembly technique and it has a lot of corrosion resistance uh, built into the manufacturing process that makes it capable of operating in the extremely uh, aggressive and harsh environment of maritime operations. Leonardo helicopters have been producing state-of-the-art class defining military aircraft for over 100 years and this aircraft absolutely follows in that incredible pedigree of the Leonardo AW159 Wildcat and AW101 Merlin. The AW149 brings the latest generation of capability to the modern battlefield.